You might think looking for the best CPU for Adobe Photoshop is straightforward. Well, it's not so much. I have spent countless hours of testing so many different systems and ridiculous amount of hours I've spent trying to benchmark all of these CPUs to make sure that uh, I can give you a solid answer. In this video, I'm gonna show you which is the best CPU for Adobe Photoshop, how the hardware actually utilizes the software or vice versa, and how you can save money in the process. Let's go. Ah, it's so annoying. I don't want to pay hundreds of dollars to just change my Windows wallpaper just because my Windows isn't licensed. Well, why don't you try Hookies? That's a ton cheaper. And if you use the code TN20, you get it even cheaper. What do you mean? How do I get it and how is it possible? Well, see this video here or the one you're watching. Click yeah. in the link on the video description, add the Windows 11 CD product to the card, proceed to checkout, add the code TN20 for the extra discount. So what, the Windows 11 Pro OEM key is just $23.22? .22. Yeah. Choose the preferred payment option and complete the purchase. The key will be available on the purchased orders in a few moments. Copy the key and paste it into your Windows activation settings and you're all done. Oh, well, that was easy. Is that Ryan Gosling? Uh, uh, no. Anyway, by the way, the same discount code also works website-wide, so go check out uh, other products, maybe like Microsoft Office. By the way, if you enjoy content like this, hit that like button, subscribe if you haven't already. This is a channel for creators, so if you're doing any creator activity and you want to stay tuned with the latest news and hardware and how does it react and so on, subscribe. Also, if you have a specific build or request for a certain build, then reach out on Minect, linked in the description below. I'll always get back to the Minect messages within 24 hours. And finally, if you want to pick up any of these CPUs, I'm going to leave them all linked in the description below, which will give me small commission at no extra cost to you, but it does help to build this channel and keep doing the work we do. Thank you very much if you choose to do that. Now, the first thing we want to talk about is Photoshop, the software itself. How does it utilize the hardware? Because CPU is not the only one in the system that kind of gets added to the equation. We have also RAM and GPU. The most important thing for Photoshop is the CPU. And that's why I'm talking about this video, I'm making this video because the performance numbers are mostly affected by the CPU. But not just that, there are multi-threaded and single-threaded workflows or heavy threaded and lightly threaded workflows. Photoshop is one of those workflows which is lightly threaded, which means that if you have a very high single core performance for your CPU, that performs better for Photoshop. But that's not really the case in here, but that is how Photoshop works. There's also the cache involved and actually instructions per clock speed that are actually important. So in a minute, you'll see with these benchmarks that that's not the only one. What that means is if you've got multiple cores like a Threadripper or Xeon here, then they won't give you that much performance in here. And you would rather spend more money on a single thread or a CPU that has more single core performance. Second important thing in your system that gives you performance in here is actually RAM. Firstly, capacity because depending on your workflow, most likely the capacity is the one that you're going to run out of first. You think 16 gigabytes is enough? I'm going to say no. 13 gigabytes, kind of, that's the lowest that I would go for, but a good sweet spot is at least 64 gigabytes. And these days, 64 gigabytes is not really that expensive. And I would argue that 64 gigabytes will give you better bang for buck per gigabyte of capacity than a 32 gigabyte kit. Go check out some links in the description below. But then secondly, there is also the speed of the RAM to consider. And this is where things get very, very complicated. I'll try to make it very simple for you. Firstly, the RAM kit has two kind of measurements. We've got the speed, which is in megahertz, and then we've got the latency, which is also named for CL or CAS latency. So that is in the back here. We can see that this is Kingston Fury DDR5, 64, which means 6400 megahertz, and then C32. So CL32, it means it's the cast latency is 32. In very simple terms, the lower the latency, the lower the number it is, the better it is. And then the higher the frequency, the better the RAM is as well. But there is another thing that uh, we should consider. As creators, the stability of the system is very important. So when you think that I'm just gonna get the fastest RAM speed, 
which in this case would be here. 8400 megahertz and it's going to be blazing fast. It's going to give me a lot of performance. You might be a little bit disappointed in two reasons. Number one, your CPU might not be able to support that. And we'll talk in a minute which CPUs can do that. But secondly, the RAM speed might not be as important as your actual capacity. I've done a ton of tests and yes, the RAM speed can give you extra boost, but it's not as significant as having larger capacity in making sure that everything that the Photoshop wants to use can be stored on RAM. So the best ability here, I would say, is stick within the IMC specs of the CPU manufacturer. If it's AMD Ryzen 7000 or 9000, check out the specs, or the same with Core Ultra, Intel 14th gen, 13th gen. The only one that I would say is kind of feel free to go with whatever you want is Threadripper. Threadripper is an interesting one because it has either quad or eight channel memory and I have seen so stable performance with much higher memory spec than what AMD actually says. So they're being very conservative on the Threadripper side. 6400 megahertz on Threadripper, quad channel memory with a G-Skill kit, something like that. No problem whatsoever. Never seen any instability issues. Let me know if the RAM kind of configuration is a little bit confusing to you. And if you'd like a little bit more explanation video, maybe we can do that separately because it kind of affects all the other softwares as well. And then finally, we have the GPU. And in here, I would say that GPU is not as important as you think for Photoshop. Yes, there are certain AI kind of features and workflows in within Photoshop that can utilize GPU, but it's not as important as you might think. I'd say Nvidia is always the best option because they have got the most best and most stable performance for the creative workflow. For Photoshop, most of the time, extremely overkill. Unless you have any other workloads in the mix and you can utilize that, then yes, but Photoshop only, overkill. Secondly, I would say that Intel is a second best option in my testing. Intel ARC GPUs perform extremely well and give you a lot of VRAM if you need any of the you know larger scale things that you're doing in there so I think they give you a very good bang for buck and then thirdly I would say AMD is there as well but in essence really whichever GPU you have as long as you've got more than eight gigabytes of VRAM and it's a decent GPU you don't really need anything there you can cheap out when going with ARC because they're considerably cheaper than any of the competition finally let's talk about the actual benchmarks now and what you can see here so on the screen you can see a ton of CPUs being tested. In fact, there is 19 CPUs tested and there's a few more that I haven't had a chance to test because whenever I'm testing, by the time I test something else changes and then I have to retest everything. But this should give you quite a good idea of where your CPU might be formed. So on the first column, you're gonna see the overall score, which consists of general score and filter score. And that gives you the overall score. Then we obviously see the percentage of seeing which CPUs a uh, whole much better to give you an idea what performance difference you see. And then finally, benchmark version and Photoshop versions as well, which aren't as important to you, but just kind of showing you that it's exactly the same testing environment for everything. The other very important thing for this is I'm going to leave the test bench up in the description below, but I'm testing each CPU with their stock IMC settings. So not the same RAM speed for everything, but the stock, the most stable setting. So different generations of CPUs will have different RAM speeds just because new generation supports faster RAM, if that makes sense. Now, one of the first things that you're gonna notice in here is that AMD Ryzen CPUs are actually one of the best ones for Photoshop and they perform quite a bit better than any of the rest of the pack. As you can see, this line in here, that section is all AMD Ryzen apart from this bottom one here which is the intel core ultra and the boost profile in there that's another interesting thing to talk about here now this cpu here which is the core ultra 7 265k and the 295k they have been tested in different generations and kind of different performance boosts if that makes sense now i'll first explain this Ultra 7, which is tested without the boost profile. Intel has released its boost profile, and if you didn't know that yet and you're using Core Ultra, update the BIOS and enable the boost profile. That's Intel basically performance profile that enables you higher memory frequency and also a little bit faster speed. And when testing with that, I can see that it does give us a little bit more performance. This Ultra 9 obviously is a little bit faster, but it's tested with faster RAM and the boost settings, which does give it 
a little bit of a performance boost. So this CPU here would essentially be somewhere between this section there rather than being a little bit lower, if that makes sense. As you can see, the top of the pack that I would see is tier one is really all AMD CPUs. As you can see, the 9900X here is good option. And then the best one that I have tested is the 9950X on the top of the chart. If you're wondering if the 3D variant 9950X 3D is any better, not really. For creators, it doesn't make any difference. It's just over there and doesn't make a ton of difference. Then we've got this middle section in here and I would call it tier two. And as you can see in there, we've got the Ryzen 7000 all the way to Ryzen 7950X. But basically all of these performance in this section are in es essentially the same. So whether you're going with a 14700K here, which is very, very affordable, or the Core Ultra 5 235K, which is even more affordable, you'll get basically the same performance as the 14900K or even the 7950X, which here is slightly faster. But basically that's the middle section uh, of the performance in there. And then we've got the bottom section in this section, which I'd say is tier three. And interestingly, when we go down to the 13th gen and 14600K, as you can see from here below, you can see that they don't perform as well in there. At the same time, it's the difference between the top of tier three and the bottom of tier two is not that big of a difference. But we see a significant performance drop when we go to the 12th gen and the bottom here, the bottom two are Threadripper. And Threadripper, even though having a lot of cores, so this over here is a 10K CPU, ridiculous performance, 96 cores, but it doesn't perform as well as the 64 gigabyte version, as you can see in there. So we can see that Threadripper really for Photoshop isn't worth it in most of the cases. And then we've got a Ryzen 7000 in there. You might notice that I don't have the Ryzen 9000 9700X or 9600X CPUs in here, but they would kind of perform somewhere in the middle pack tier through two here because they have a lot of cash and very good single core performance while at the same time being very, very affordable. So they're not CPUs to disqualify in here, but because I don't have them in and since I wanted to make you this video without waiting forever for these CPUs to come in. I wanted to give you this first. Now let's talk about the pricing options here then. Which one are the best bang for buck? So obviously the best one to get here is the AMD ones. Ryzen 9s, whichever one you go for, you're going to get ultimately the best performance. And secondly, I would say is the Core Ultra. And the interesting thing there is that Intel's got a very good sale on the Core Ultra 7265K. Very affordable pricing. In fact, quite a bit lower than like the 14th gen that are previously recommended but for some reason that the 13 14 and 12th gen motherboards are very very expensive and then the core ultra motherboards are a lot more affordable which makes it a lot more sense to go with the core ultra series and you've got a better future and upgrade path plus the memory support for that is a lot better the imc for intel core ultra is super super good and you don't basically need to worry about which frequency it can support even though i'm kind of going against with my own recommendations here i mean the boost profile proves itself that they underestimated how good their imc is and they upgraded the factory default to 8000 megahertz 8000 that's absolutely insane from 6400 but basically if you go with two sticks any frequency is supported with the core ultra series in the ryzen series i think you can easily go with 5600 mega transfers per second i did a whole video of upping this to a lot faster ram and i didn't see any performance difference for creators going with faster ram doesn't really make sense but if you want to go with 6000 it is kind of good as well you really don't get that much performance increase but sometimes 6000 is better than 5600 and so on so at the same time if you want to save money on ram going with 5600 that supports expo on amd completely fine and within margin of error whether you go 5600 or 8000 megahertz ram for amd if you want to check out the latest pricing for any of your favorite cpus check it out in the video description below i'll leave them linked in there okay which program should we do next what's your next workflow that we should be looking at and which cpu should be looking at thanks for watching like the video if you might found it helpful subscribe if you haven't already thanks guys for watching god bless bye bye